here. We're going to get started. I'd like to call to order the uh, special board meeting uh, budget workshop for May 7th, 2021. If you'd please uh, rise. We'll have our invocation by <coughs> Reverend Lowe Davis, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Almighty, most merciful, gracious Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this city, and we ask your guidance in preserving those blessings and making good and right decisions for this city, its citizens, its visitors, and all who live and work here. Amen. Thank you, um, Reverend Davis. I'd like to just start with a brief uh, opening comment. Um, but first, we'll do the approval of the agenda. You have the agenda in front of you. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor Pro Tem, second by Alderman Allen. Any discussion? All in favor? OK, agenda approved. Thank you. Um, Good morning and welcome. Glad to see everyone here. Mr. Alt, thank you for keeping the record intact. Uh, Mr. Pethy, thank you for being here to, to cover the event. Um, thank you to our Department of Tourism Communication for getting it out to our public. And thank you to the board uh, for being here today, city manager, our city staff. I want to first thank the fire department they had an event last night, a fire at the Christian school that they responded to. They were out pretty late. Fortunately, no loss of life. The building was damaged. All of our firemen came back intact. So it's, it's, a, it's a bad event, but the overall outcome was good. So I want to thank them for that. Thank you, uh, Chief Goring. And I hope everyone is still in good spirits uh, from the city dock uh, opening on Wednesday. Uh, we rejoice in success, but now return to the important work before us. The process that we do here is different with respect to where I work. In the emergency room, our doctors and nurses have to make immediate decisions. There's no recess. In many instances, you have only one chance to get it right. Here we have an urgency, but we can take the time. We need to get it right. There is complexity of the human body, and there is complexity, in particular, of this budget uh, in discrete numbers. But we have the advantage. We, we've, we've, we have a staff that's given us the numbers in discrete detail. However, if the board needs more time to work on this budget, we certainly can schedule another workshop next week to do so, so take the time to, to get it right. The budget process is a huge effort, it's a huge undertaking, and we need to make sure does each department have the equipment, the supplies, the staffing to achieve the goals that they need to accomplish? Does each department have what they need to be successful? Does each employee have what is necessary to be successful and to be happy working for the city? They have a health insurance. Do they have a salary that is competitive and will help to retain employees? Are there opportunities for training and education and advancement? The most important asset the city has are the people who work here. We all must strive for quality and excellence in all that we do. An example of perception that in some ways denotes quality and excellence is our city hall. The facade, peeling, it is, more than, it is more than this one building. It is the hall of the city and its citizens. In 2017, I wrote, historic building theory. 
When a city allows its, its, its historic buildings to languish in disrepair, it becomes the norm. And over time, it is nearly impossible financially to repair the damage from the last two years of this policy of neglect. This is particularly true for the Old Brunswick County Courthouse City Hall. It is also a city has asset that is underutilized. The city should emulate the way our citizens take pride in their homes and yards from the historic homes in the, vill in the village to our newer developments. So this is something that I have thought about for, for a long time and it's something that we need to do and it's so important. Do we have in the budget the resources to make sure that every building is inspected and necessary repairs and upgrades are made? Does the city need to contract out with a structural engineer for this and for the yearly inspections? Similar to the city having a, a, a civil engineer for the storm water mitigation plan for the entire city. So for me, we embrace a uh, public health principle of prevention in every aspect uh, possible. In terms of future spending, you know, we have a budget now. What, what are some of the things we may not have talked about in future spending? One of the things is a, a parking deck pr project uh, in partnering with the hospital. If you, if you go by there, you'll see cars parked on the grass and, and just in every square inch of it is used. And uh, it's, it, they've outgrown it. And so there's a need for more parking at the hospital and a parking deck would help to alleviate that and then could be used primarily on weekends for our visitors and tourists. And we could have a, 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 a electric shuttles uh, to the downtown area. So they could park at the deck and then shuttle downtown. Um, also, um, something important to me in which I plan to take an active role, our cemeteries. The city is responsible for the maintenance of these cemeteries along with the 56 miles of right away that we heard about uh, in the last couple weeks. So it's a daunting task. It's a lot of mowing and debris removal. And the city does a good job with the macro aspect of it. I cannot tell you when we looked at the cemetery after Hurricane Isaisis and then what the city did in a very short time, it looked like there had not been any damage there. And so I'm, I'm so proud of that and the city manager and I we talked about that and the city rose up to that occasion. And so I wanna make sure we're also doing what is right in making sure each cemetery plot is properly maintained. Does the city have the time and the resources to do this or do we need to contract with the lawn service for this? Our beautification committee and the historical society have been involved with the upkeep of our cemetery, but I wanna make sure that the ancestors of this city receive the respect they deserve. It is a reflection on the city on how we, and, and on how we preserve our heritage. So I plan to meet with the uh, cemetery superintendent the next few weeks. We're gonna walk the cemetery and um, I'm gonna give him a tour of what I think we need to do and the, and the people that I know there. And that is how we're gonna move forward. Number one is still infrastructure, roads, sewer, water, but we must embrace all that we can to do with this budget to improve the quality of life for our citizens in our city. So I, I thank you for that, and I want to thank everyone who's worked on this budget. And I will now um, turn it over to Mr. Hargrove as we go to item E, capital projects and funding mechanisms. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. So we're finally coming to the end of a long road in, in building this budget. We're not there yet. We still have several things to discuss. Uh, I don't know that we'll finish it up today, uh, but I don't think we'll be here all day long either. I think we'll um, probably be a pretty short morning talking about some capital projects. We're probably gonna need to meet next Friday morning. I think we've already scheduled that meeting um, to do the final analysis on it uh, once we put the capital projects in. Uh, there will be, unless you direct staff today to make significant changes in it, uh, pretty much what you're looking at 
in the budget today is is what it will be with the exception of the capital projects that we're going to talk about today uh, these are the capital projects that you asked me to concentrate on last week so um, and and really the difference will be what funding mechanisms we decide to go with well really the funding stream uh, with that so before I get into that I'd like y'all to know that we're uh, having to in our budget this year is to consider some water allocation we spoke about that extensively last week uh, or last time we met I've had opportunity to meet with the county and propose the idea of buying half the allotment now uh, and doing maybe the second half of the allotment within two years. Uh, conceptually, the county is agreeable to that. They would like to put a cap on the length of time. I suggested 36 months uh, that we would buy the second allotment. Uh, and we all agreed that it should be based on the producer performer index or the producer price index of what it costs them to, to supply that water. So it would not be an arbitrary number. So we're going to start off looking at that contract which has been in the process of being written up now uh, for the first 115,000 gallons and then we'll do the other 115,000 gallons as, as needed within the next 36 months. So that, that is a good thing. Uh, it's going to save us a little bit of money uh, up front. I don't know what it'll cost on the back end, but at least it's not going to be that huge capital outlay to begin with. The allotment in total will be 230,000 gallons. But our first part of the purchase will be 115,000 gallons, which will be approximately $600,000. We didn't calculate. We, we figured that's a, that's a ballpark estimate with, with interest, and, and so, but we shouldn't have to finance that over nine years. Any other questions about the water allocation? Great. Next thing I'd like to talk about before, as we move forward are the capital projects. Staff and myself has done extensive analysis of our fund balance. Uh, this is a report that aldermen get on a monthly basis. And so it's, it is public knowledge. It is not something that we keep hidden. Uh, now granted, diving into that financial report every month is kind of difficult if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, we are trying to get a budget dashboard put together that would be a snapshot for y'all that you would be able to look at that every month and know and it says plainly fund balance so that you would know that. It's important that you get the pertinent information and don't get bogged down in all the minutiae that's involved with with the budget and spreadsheets and, and, and that sort of thing. After careful analysis, my recommendation to the board is no new property taxes for this upcoming fiscal year. We have a healthy fund balance. We spoke about that last week. Uh, we have come to find out that we have a projected fund balance this year of almost 60%. coastal communities it's recommended that we keep a 30 percent fund balance in reserve uh, to help us deal with uh, the occasional hurricane that we get and I use the word occasional very loosely uh, so we're we have a real healthy fund balance moving forward so after we looked at it we decided that there was no need for a property tax increase we could fund our capital projects with taking some money out of that reserve. Uh, it, it is the residents' money. We don't need to be sitting on it. We need to go ahead and get these uh, improvements made. With that being said, I'm going to recommend, uh, I think a figure that we had tossed about in the past was $700,000 next year for capital improvements. We're, gonna, we're asking to increase that to about $1.2 million. 
uh, and in front of you you're going to see your the, the capital projects that we are recommending for this year or actually you have recommended to move forward the ones that are almost shovel ready they're pretty much listed in, in descending order of, our, of priority you can see that the Bay Street Road and sidewalk collapse is going to be about $365,000. Uh, Alderman Island, you asked me last week about the tonnage of riprap. We're bringing in, and I th thought I said something like 35 tons. Uh, I was mistaken. It's, uh, it's 1,500 tons. So that's a significant difference. I've been assured by public services uh, that it's more than adequate to take care of shoring up Bay Street and over here at the waterfront park where the sidewalk underwash has happened. Plus we have rip wrap up at our lay down yard off 9th Street that we'll be able to utilize. That'll be a cost savings to the city as well. That project is a FEMA project that has been obligated and we have to pay for that up front and then FEMA will, ob will reimburse us for $365,000 as long as we follow all the proper procedures which I assure you we will. So that money will come back to us. And, and, I, and that's important to remember as we move through that because I know you see the figure at the bottom of the page at 1.7. And I know I'm not a mathematician, but I know there's a difference between 1.2 and 1.7. The second thing that we really need to focus on is the erosion control project on Brunswick Street. We're moving forward on that. We've gotten approval from the property owners. We're doing our last notice out to the uh, adjacent property owners, uh, which we should have that within the next 10 days. Then we'll apply for our camera permit. I expect that project to be undertaken within 30 days. The cost of that's going to be approximately $135,000. Gordon, can you describe what you're going to do there and where it's going to be? What we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to clean that area out up to we cannot impede on or we cannot go into the high water mark. Any, we have to do all our work from the high water mark back to the pavement. So what we'll do is we're going to come in and clean that area out. We're going to put geo bags, which are the, um, they're kind of, have you ever seen these sandbags on the beach that they, for prevent erosion, we'll, we'll put those, uh, secure those up against the roadbed, and then we'll fill that in with, uh, backfill that with riprap. And that is between um, Brunswick Alley and Short Street? It will not go all the way from Brunswick Alley to Short Street. It is approximately, there's a wooden pier right there that stops, and it goes to where uh, Admiral Holdings Pier is. Actually, there's a little sliver of a pier right there before you get to Admiral Holdings, well, and we'll, we'll go to that point. So it'll go from the Admiral Holdings Pier um, to where Ben Wilson's property meets the other pier on the left side. I'd like to talk, probably not right now, but for consideration before we finalize the budget, the part of Brunswick Street across the street from me is crumbling and getting close to the road. So if there's a possibility of including that so that the, the road, this is just west of the dock, so that that doesn't go the way of the area in front of the Robinsons, that would be worth considering. Cars can't park there anymore because they may end up sliding down into the uh, water. Well, that, that's a good question. You know, that's a good. <laughs> well, that's a good question because I I assumed that when you said Brunswick Street, it was going to do the the whole all of Brunswick Street where it needed mitigation, so it does not. So well, just where does it go? My property does not have a, an erosion issue. I've got a steep bank into the water, and then, then, it, then there's land. But the 
steep bank has been undermined and undermined, and you get out of the car now, and you're starting to slip down into the marsh, into the water. That's certainly something that we can talk about. I think it's a little late in the process to include that in this year's budget. However, that does not mean that we can't identify that this year. Okay. There are other um, paths forward to solve that problem. Right now, our most urgent need is to get this piece of uh, Brunswick Street that's in front of Mr. Wilson's house repaired because that water, that is underwashed. That road is, in, it, it will collapse with another storm. We can't have that. So as opposed to tying this in front of your house to this particular project, we probably need to address that as a separate project into the fiscal year, which we can certainly find the funding for that uh, in our fund balance as we move forward and get reimbursed from FEMA. And, you know, we can do a budget amendment to fund that. Uh, but right now, we're, we're probably two-thirds of the way through the camera permitting process. So to step back and do that would delay this Brunswick Street. So while I sympathize with what you're saying and we can identify it, we need to get this job done ASAP. Well, this, is, this would be a preventative thing so that by the time we are doing this next year, we're not uh, talking about a road collapsing again. I mean, this is going the way of the Brunswick Street section in front of the Robinsons. I understand. And you're, when you said Wilson, there's Mr. Woody, and then there's Mr. Ben and Gibby. You're talking about Ben and Gibby, right? Yes. Ben Wilson, yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Just to clarify that, because Mr. Woody Wilson is right next to her. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Thank you. The third project, road repairs. We're recommending putting $400,000 into road repairs. Uh, some of that's gonna uh, simply be repaving certain sections. Some of that's going to be remilling and taking it down to good asphalt and repaving. Some of that will be just be cutting the road, doing away with the asphalt, redoing the roadbed, and, and cleaning that up. Um, so that, that'll be, come in at about $400,000. Is, is that on top of what we'd spend from the Powell Bill money? Melody did, did not include the Powell Bill money on that. So that'll be on top of the Powell Bill funds that we receive. I think that's about $96,000. And the Powell Bill money is not committed to anything specifically this time, correct? Okay. I have a question also. Now, the 400000 and this particular uh, set of projects, how does that fit with the fact that we're circling back and going to have to remill and redo some things as a result of the sewer project? We allocated a lot of money for that already. Completely different. Okay. Different pot of money. Good. The House Street sewer project is completely different than this 400000 which um, at the end of the day, uh, we've come to an agreement with DOT about the House Street sewer project that th that's gonna end up saving us money. Our anticipation is, is that uh, change order that you approved in the emergency meeting uh, is not going to be for the full amount. So DOT has been very gracious in working with us on that project and have, have uh, Alderman Lombardi, the mayor, Tom Stanley and myself, we've all, all talked with DOT, and we've come up with we, what we think is a viable alternative to save the city a considerable amount of money. Do you have an idea how much? Not at this point, because we're having to rebid that part of the project with different asphalt standards and, and milling standards. So hopefully in the next week or so, those uh, bid, we've asked for that bid, I think two weeks ago. Uh, we've yet to receive that information, so um, but we we think it's going to be a significant amount of money. Good.
further questions on that? Kingsley Pier. Uh, I bl- about that. Uh, House Street Sidewalk Project. We've allocated $150,000 to go ahead and move that over or to move that forward. Um, that will give us the sidewalk uh, to and the crosswalk there at 9th Street. So we're, we would like to move that project forward. We kind of got halfway into that. Um, we've got some in- engineering costs associated with that that we really need to go ahead and um, put that plan into act, action. To be clear, and this is primarily for public consumption, exactly where will that sidewalk go and which side of House Street? My anticipation, Alderman Davis, is that it will go on the east, I'm sorry, the south side of the House Street, 9th Street intersection. That's the hospital side, right? That's the hospital side. That's my anticipation, uh, but that's subject to change. You know, it's really being a DOT maintained highway, uh, really it's going to be up to them where they want it to go. Though, ironically, we get to pay for it. The the 150 is additional money beyond the grant money that we've gotten, correct? Don't, we had a grant to put in the sidewalk, but then there was an issue with the cost going across 9th Street. So that this 150 is extra money that we have to spend in order to fully accomplish the project, correct? I don't think we put that in the current budget, but we can. Didn't put what in? the. The grant money? Uh, I'm sorry, which part? Of, uh, maybe I'm not. Right, right. No, am I misunderstanding? We, we got a grant to put in the sidewalk, right? And then we discovered the grant was not enough money to com- fully complete the project because of some additional uh, requirements that DOT put in concerning crosswalks on 9th Street. So I guess my question is, is this 150000 is in addition to the grant money in order to meet those additional requirements that DOT put in. Is that correct? I can answer that. This $150,000 is from fund balance, so it would be in addition to what's already there. Yeah, so I'm sorry, John, I misunderstood you. Any other questions about the sidewalk? The uh, Kingsley Pier is going to, if you recall in my last conversation at the Board of Aldermen meeting, was in a mitigation portal. FEMA has decided to pull that out of the mitigation portal and I agree with them. Uh, Their structural engineers say that the added cost for, um, the way FEMA works is that they're only gonna replace what was damaged. And so they don't think while concrete pilings, if it spanned the entire length of the pier, would, would be very effective. They don't think having just a few concrete pilings and the rest wooden pilings is going to make a significant difference in mitigating the impacts from a storm. So their mitigation specialists have decided that it's not something that should be in mitigation. So they've pulled it out and are moving it forward. Um, they're going to authorize that project for about $210,000 to repair that. And with We'll, we'll, we will be reimbursed. That project is yet to be obligated because it's just been pulled out of the mitigation portal. I fully expect it to be obligated within the next week or two. So um, that'll so, be money that will be in reimbursed from, uh, for us. So that, that will, I'm sorry, that will entail replacing all the existing pilings with concrete pilings? Is that what you're saying? No. We're gonna go back with the damaged pilings with wooden pilings. Reimbursement. This will actually only cost us ten thousand. Will not cost us anything. I mean, we have to pay for it up front, but then they will reimburse us. Well, this says two hundred and ten, and if they're going to authorize two hundred, we got to come up with ten, right? No, no, they're authorizing the full repair, two hundred and ten. The 
next capital project is the stormwater project. It's going to be a hundred thousand dollars. I'm just going to tell you that there is no way that that's going to be nearly enough, but we need to seed this fund to get it started. Uh, again, we should know something in July about whether the grant that we applied for was approved. Uh, if that's the case, then we'll have $250,000 in that project fund. Uh, but stormwater, uh, as the mayor has alluded to before, if you've seen it out there and you see the see the impact it's having on our community from a public health perspective, from a property damage perspective, uh, you know that this is something that, that's needed. And I mean, we can't continue to kick the can down the road. So staff and I are recommending that we see this particular cap capital project fund with $100,000 from fund balance. How will 100,000 get us? Probably the planning stages. I anticipate a full-fledged stormwater plan here in the city of Southport will cost approximately $5 million. The really good thing about that is there is a, a lot of grants out there available for this sort of thing. Golden Leaf offers some, um, EEG offers some grant money, and all of, the, all of those grants are starting to open up now. It will be something that we will be proactively pursuing. But most of the time when you apply for these grants, they want to see a plan. They want to know how you're going to attack this problem. And without a plan, we really aren't very competitive in the grant process. The next project up is the pedestrian corridor. We're estimating that's going to be about $125,000. Frankly, right now that we're in the middle of, um, or not really the middle, but the beginning of tourist season, we have a lot of people down on the corridor. This might have to be a project that we wait and do in the fall. However, we've been very proactive about signage down there. Uh, I think it's helped some. I will get uh, Chief Coring to give us an update next week. Uh, uh, concerning the traffic impacts. I haven't heard many complaints about wrong way traffic on Short Street since the signage has gone up. I could be wrong. I mean, y'all are typically the ones that they complain to. Uh, but I, I think the signage is at least having an impact to get their attention. We've strategically located some stop signs and some other signs uh, trying, to make, trying to make the public aware of, of the situation down there. Uh, we will be bringing this up for a discussion on uh, next Thursday night's regular Board of Aldermen meeting that where we would like to set a public hearing uh, to get the public's input on what design that they think is most appropriate for that area. A question? What would we be spending the 125000 on? Would be on paving, asphalt, thermoplastic line markings, the plan was submitted to us by the Yacht Basin Overlay District Committee at our last meeting. I know, but I mean, what's going to cost us 125000 In the plan. I'll go back and look. So what, what it is, it really is going to depend on what option you go with. But there's speed tables included. There are thermoplastic. Oh my gosh, that stuff is expensive by the foot. It's just out of sight, and you know, it, there's going to be uh, lines. There's going to be uh, asphalt to be paved. I mean, it just depends really on, on what you, what, not asphalt to be paved, but asphalt to be used for paving. Um, and so it's just a, it's just a lot of little different things that go into that project. Thank you. We did a budget for the kayak launch this year. We did $150,000. Uh, I'm not really quite that familiar with that area because I have not walked, but I understand that there's probably going to have to be a pier built out to get over the marsh grass 
in order for folks to launch their kayaks. So $150,000 is what we budgeted to get that project started with. Uh, that does not include the amount that the marina's contract calls for them to contribute to the project. So we would probably be looking at about $200,000 for the kayak launch project. Hundred and fifty thousand from us. And um, it would be good to have our grant writer see CAMA a CAMA grant for this as well because it's water access. Absolutely. The next project's gonna be, as as the mayor talked about early in his opening statement, is siting for City Hall. Uh, now we have budgeted $85,000. We have two options that we can move forward with that. Uh, one is the vinyl siding, uh, which you all know the advantages and disadvantages to that, or we can revisit that conversation with Tom Stanley if you would like. Uh, the other choice is Hardy Plank, which is the cement board. Uh, both of them have a long life. There is a um, significant cost difference between the two, it's my understanding. So that is a project that we have funded in capital projects this year as well. So if you all look at that total, you're looking at $1.72 million for capital projects. Now how we're recommending the $1.2 million is if you'll look at the Bay Street road and sidewalk collapse, that's refundable through FEMA as is the Kingsley Pier. I'm not gonna try to do all that math in public, but it looks like it comes up to about 575 to me, which would bring it down to the $1.2 million threshold. And what we'll do is we'll kind of do a rolling project on these as we get reimbursed for the Bay Street, we'll move to the next one. And so really at any given time, our outlay will be in that $1.2 million range. And is that, is the reimbursement reflected over here on to the right we've got running fund balance is the reimbursement reflected in that so at the end of all this we would hopefully have the running fund balance would be increased by five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars so our actual fund balance total would be more like three million than two and a half million right, right. okay so I'm pretty much done with what I have to say about the capital projects. I'm gonna let Melanie step you through how we're gonna get there. Uh, there's a couple different ways we can get there. It's like going to Raleigh. We can either take I-40 or we can take 421. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're still gonna end up in Raleigh. Uh, it's just gonna really matter how we wanna go there, uh, what's legal, and what is the most efficient way for us to get there. And so she'll walk you through some of the ideas of whether we want to go ahead and fund that now, pull that money out of, I'm going to let her talk about that. I'm not going to, before, I'm not going to get in the weeds. Before um, you do but, that, Gordon, one last question. So it, are y'all comfortable with a $3 million fund balance and our ability to handle hurricane, et cetera, et cetera? I am because we, we hurricane Issa, Issa, although it was a cat one storm, we still had a lot of damage, and it was at about $1.7 million, so I feel comfortable at 1.3 uh, that that'll give us an excess. Let's face it, if, if we have a Category 5 storm come through here, or 4 or 5, we got bigger issues that $3 million isn't going to touch. We're going to have to have some uh, an immense amount of federal and state help. So I feel comfortable with, short of a catastrophic storm, and, you know, if... I don't think we're going to have a hurricane this year. <laughs> so um, I do feel comfortable comfortable with that, Alderman Allen. Melanie and I have talked about this extensively. Uh, that's going to leave us with about a 36% fund balance. State recommends a 30%. Um, we're sitting at 60%. We really need to get some of these capital improvements. Um, that have begged to be done for the last decade. We need to go ahead and be proactively move forward and make it Southport all it can be. Um, 
so the 36 percent fund balance is without the additional 500 added back in so it would be a higher percentage than that Uh, rough estimate, Alderman Moss Stedler, is I think it would bump it back up to about the 41 percent. Does, does anyone have any more questions for me? So I'm going to let Melanie take over now and talk to you about uh, how we're going to get there. Um, she's going to be our tour director for the next few minutes. Morning. So I know I inundated your tables this morning with a lot of different papers, but if you'll go to the legal size um, paper that has a number of years summarized for our audits and our fund balance and how LGC um, calculates their percentage to expenditures and being on the coast. LGC likes to see, or the state, Treasurer's Office likes to see 30% um, available fund balance to expenditures. And so in the past, we had dropped down below that and they you know, asked us to work on bringing that fund balance back up, which we have successfully done. Um, this past year in our budget from, you know, from last July, we underestimated our revenue due to COVID because we did not know what effect COVID was going to have on our collections of our property taxes and other items. So in February, we received, you know, 97% of our property taxes, which was a very good response. Um, everyone has was able to pay their property taxes. So we actually have surplus money in our budget at the moment. And we have also been informed from FEMA that we're, that they've obligated around a million dollars that will also be in our fund balance. So below that last green line on that sheet, you will see where I've taken our projected revenue through the end of this year, June 30 of 2021, along with a FEMA obligation for our general fund and expenditures, and we're, we're coming out with a net of almost a million point one. And then if we fund this capital project ordinance today or next week at our, at our board meeting, um, it would, we would have a slight deficit, a projected deficit of $100,000. And running that num those numbers into an, a future estimate estimation for our, our available fund balance, that if all of this comes true, then we should be around 40% with our fund balance. So I recommend that I prepare a um, budget amendment um, appropriating all of our extra money for out of this year's budget at the moment and going ahead and funding this capital ordinance and have it in place at June 30. And so and then that would be reflected in our annual audit report um, as a budget capital project fund ordinance in our current year budget, I mean audit. Um, I think that would be a important message to our citizens that hey, we are committed to these, to these projects instead of waiting to do it next year, um, which would be showing a appropriation of fund balance to establish this capital project fund. Do you understand what I just said? <laughs> Yes, and I'd like to go ahead and make that in the form of a motion. I have a question before we vote. Just when we create a capital improvement 
fund like this and we've named particular projects with those amounts to it is there a possibility is it allowed to say say something doesn't cost as much as we thought can we move money that's left from one project to another category say something from you know Kingsley Pier after we got reimbursed that money could go toward road projects or something you can within that fund you can do that legally yes okay. yes I mean if we establish this as sort of an open capital project ordinance mm -hmm. then we can keep adding capital projects to this you know and identifying funding to to also put into it so we we don't have to be tied to these projects individually or the price per project we'll just kind of keep it kind of open so it'll be a rolling on ordinance until the board decides to close it in which at which time any any balance left in that or um, project fund we can just put back into our general fund oh right fund balance yeah okay we have a motion by alderman allen in terms of um, this uh, budget amendment ordinance in terms of using, using these funds for these, these projects and we had a second by okay mayor pro tem okay um, is there any further discussion okay. all in favor Aye. any opposed excellent motion carried thank you um, I would like to talk about enterprise Okay, so last year um, with Bruce, we embarked upon a program with the Enterprise Leasing Management Company, and Tony from our police department helped with that, and so he's quite knowledgeable with it because the police department is the first department that um, made purchases from Enterprise and we made a few other purchases in public works for some leased automobiles so I have a I, I have given you three different leases there for the police cars a f-250 trucks and a f-150 truck and the slight urgency in this is if we want to continue participating in this program is that we sell some of our currently owned equipment to help fund any future leases so we do have we have identified or at least enterprise has identified automobiles that they could get the highest price for at the moment and I'm going to pass you out a summary sheet that um, was delivered to me just a moment ago So they're telling us that we, that Enterprise buys these automobiles at a wholesale price. And they help us project when to sell these. So at the moment, they have a good deal going on with some F-150 trucks. That they say that if we go ahead and um, signed to lease these automobiles that within a year we could turn around and sell them and make four or five thousand dollars per automobile so and that and this was the whole pitch the whole program pitched to us last year is that once you get into the program you keep new equipment and it becomes a positive thing for for the city in investing in our equipment around town um, and I think Tony could probably add any any information or questions that you may have about that so um, I've listed the trucks that they that that we've identified that we could sell along with some police cars and it looks like that we could um, 
potentially have $176,000 coming back to us on the sale of these currently owned automobiles. And then on the bottom part down here, what, I'm wanting to re what we're wanting to replace with leases is six F-150 trucks, um, one going to the garage, three going to water and sewer, one going to grant building and grounds, and one going to parks and rec. And the $5,773 is the leasing price and also a $365 um, estimate to resell any of these in the future. So the lease, total leasing for six automobiles would be 34638 And then two um, F-250 trucks, one for water and sewer, no, I'm sorry, three, and two for building and grounds would give us three new F-250s at a tune of 16122 And then four police interceptors, including upfit, uh, brings a total of 105 thousand dollars in leasing and uh, so we would have a net surplus from the sale and um, signing on to the lease of these automobiles of seventy thousand nine hundred forty dollars so I mean I have included these leases in your new budget for next year but to take advantage of the F-150 wholesale pricing that they've got, we would have to um, probably embark upon this within the next few weeks. So this, you know, if you have questions, let me know. Um, but I would recommend that we, I do a budget amendment and asking to engage in, in doing these leases so that we can get the pricing course it'll be after July 1 before we actually get these automobiles but if we can go ahead and do a PO you know um, to to do these then that's what we would like to do so I'll Tony and I will entertain any kind of questions <laughs> the, the hundred and five thousand five hundred and sixty dollars is that's an annual lease amount right? That, that's correct so that would be well for not quite because um, that 105 includes the upfit of the police cars. Five, minus so it's 25, about 80,000. About 80,000. And then I guess the idea is next year we'd have a other older, the next generation of vehicles to sell. That's right. As well they're, to they're, offset next year's right. overall leasing right. costs. Correct. I mean, th th is there any reason why the type of use we have on these vehicles would make us, you know, would negate the agreement, you know, where the use of it as a building and grounds truck or something like that and all that kind of, they're accepting that vehicle as is at the end of the year and we're going to sell it for that price. They, bear, they basically guarantee it. They, they're basically... Okay. Almost guaranteed. It's very it, yes. different from the way leases used to be. <laughs> uh, I know that's exactly right. Well, we're we're getting these at wholesale prices, and then they're return. You know, they're selling at retail for us down the road. I'd make a motion to go ahead and accept um, this proposal from Enterprise and do the needed budget amendment. Okay, we have a, a motion to go ahead with the uh, wholesale purchase of these vehicles and um, by Alderman Allen and a second by Alderman Sharkey. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to include a vehicle for each board member also. <laughs> Allen to, uh, what, what do you think, Alderman Allen, if you want to amend your <laughs> motion? I'll, I, oh, I, can't, I can't be part of that. <laughs> <laughs> My truck will be fine. <laughs> oh, We're all happy with our vehicles. Thank you, Melanie. So we have a um, we have a, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melanie.
Thank you, Melanie. So the budget that you're seeing before you, with the addition of the capital projects that we're going to do the um, capital project ordinance for, and I believe the enterprise amendment that you just approved is going to be the budget that we're going to leave with you uh, until next week. And we that next week you can sit during the next week. I would um, encourage you to sit down, go over the budget. If you have any questions, please reach out to Melanie or myself, and we'll try to walk you through this. Uh, you know, the first tenet of a public administrator is to do no harm. And, and I think that's the same with you, Dr. Hatem. Uh, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> it's similar, absolutely it is. <laughs> So in the opposite of that, well, not really the opposite, I think this budget here does much good. It positions Southport to be all we can be as we move forward into the future. I think as we continue to craft our vision for Southport, the board's vision for Southport, and we develop a strategic plan moving forward, this is part of that. And I think it just, it, it'll serve the community well. If you have no other questions about the budget at this time, I would encourage you again to study it over the next week. Let's come together next Friday morning. It's probably going to be about the same length of time, and let's discuss it. If we're all good with it, um, then I'm going to say let's put it up for public hearing, and let's go ahead and get it adopted. I do have to send it in to the LGC by May 17th for their approval. Uh, and then I, my understanding is that they're going to take seven to ten days and have it turned back around for us, and then we can do what we need to do to move the budgeting process forward. I, I, do we need to come back next Friday? You know, look, if uh, we scheduled this to be till 11 today, I'm good. I mean, I've, I mean, if you have questions, I'll have Melanie. We're, we're here to answer them today. We can go ahead. And, I mean, we don't have to meet next Friday. That's up to y'all. I know we had the package delivered yesterday, but it's, but it's the same budget that we talked about last time, right? I mean, essentially, right. Yeah, I, you know, if we got questions, I'd say let's go ahead and uh, let's do it now. Well, I don't, you know, if, if, if y'all are prepared, I'm not trying to cut off discussion or or be in a hurry or silence anybody, but you know, I, yeah. Any, just anyone just, that has questions, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, we, we have I'm time. Ready. Yeah, absolutely. Take the time, do it right, get it right. Oh, okay. If I sit at my table for this, thank you. I just, I just have some questions, not because, just so I understand questions. Um, and uh, I started uh, starting with administration 01. I was just curious under the 2021 uh, estimated actual, which we might need to check that spelling. Um, the, <laughs> the, um, the nine under. Um, Line I, oh, emergency preparedness, the 978 under that, is that because of damage? The 978,000 under that ca Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just an estimate. That, 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 but that's just, like the FEMA damage that, that's stuff. Correct. That's from the hurricane, yes. Okay. And then I had a question under insurance and bonding. Uh, 
it being a little bit lower um, than it was last year is there um, which is uh, 4500 line right so so that we pay that in July so the actual 2021 column is more accurate than the estimated gotcha gotcha so what happens in the estimated column is that it takes the actual and annualizes in the in that column so if it's something that we've paid for the I gotcha. year yeah. at a different time of yeah, the year at a different I got gotcha. you yeah it's overestimated and then I just the the debt service 7100 that's for the fire house yeah and it's lower I was thinking it was going to be 125 or so and it's just a little is it decreasing as we're getting closer to the end of the term or? that's right yes when the interest is included in there okay yeah okay yeah I got the debt schedules from the state last week and adjusted those numbers okay um also I didn't know I noticed you uh, on the next one on finance on O2, I was just curious. I noticed in the summary, you you didn't include 5100 and 9600. I know they're zeroed out, but some of those that were zeroed out you included, and some you didn't. I just wanted okay. to point that out. Okay. Just since you're sending it to the LGC, I didn't know how you wanted it. Um, let me see. I wanted to understand under buildings and grounds on line 3502 it says repair and maintenance facilities you've got 183,000 um, and then it, it comes over and says 115,000 for city facilities is that where all the building maintenance is and yes that's correct okay because then it says outlay so that, that was my question. I just wanted to understand that we're saying that 115000 is what we're setting aside for air conditioners and painting or whatever. Yes, for all the city buildings. For all the city buildings. Except for fire department, maybe. Yeah, yeah and the exterior, which we just talked about, a capital. Okay. No, no, the fire department would include it in their own budget since we have Rem Remember, the fire department's funded through fire fees, not local, not our budget, so to speak. In the 5400, okay, so I'm looking now at garage, uh, the 5400 line, it, uh, it's um, more, uh, but it, it's not really clarified here why, why the proposed is higher than the requested. But that's just, you don't have to answer me here. I, I just wanted, that just seemed a question, and if we're sending it off, you'll. Is that reflective of the lease agreement that we just discussed? 
to do, I don't know. to do the replacement of the vehicles for the trucks, maybe? Oh, that is it, exactly. That okay. is it. Okay, yep. so. Yep. Additional vehicle, that's right. Okay. Hundred would be about that amount, though, not thirteen one seven. We, are, right? we already have one lease currently in place there, so I was just adding another one. Yeah. Okay. And also, uh, fifty four hundred and fifty one hundred are out of order on the summary, I think, or somewhere. Oh no, on the list. Okay. On, looking at um, streets I just had a well and I probably would have to have Tom I don't know if the city manager could answer the question but I see they requested 45,000 but we're only giving them 25,000 for departmental supplies 2600 line item 2600 on streets we decreased that because of the purchase of signs street signs that he's already done Oh, okay. So we so do we have some new that. street signs to put up. Right. He yeah. just ordered them just within the last few weeks. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. So I, I wondered, it uh, for streets, I saw that street lights are under streets as opposed to um, electric. And, and I, is that the, the, the price of electricity is all that is, but it just comes under the streets. Okay. I didn't realize that before. I had a question about uh, under Animal Protective Services. You d it d doesn't include, um, well, that was workers' comp. Bonding. Never, never mind. That was. Um, I was just curious under police the insurance and bonding that it was less than last year is that again one of those pay it different times of years things right yeah okay cool I'm sure that Kate has included that in her budget. I'm probably in the 2602 line item. Look at the description for 2602. It says veterinary care cost for emergency and take exams, medications, and services. Mm -hmm. Under developmental services, um, or, or development services, not developmental. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, put on bump. <laughs> um, the um, it says thirty thousand requested. I know we were talking about the Camel land use plan for fifteen. That because he was going to break it into two things, but th that's all that's listed there. I'm sorry, the line item number is 4,400. Right, okay. I think 
um, we need to include some additional attorney professional fees in here. Okay, just list it. Yeah. I, th I think we also included, if I'm not mistaken, some money in there for potential consulting services relative to um, the large project on the west side. And then um, on un, under Parks and Recs, and this is probably going to be the same answer you've been giving me, uh, on line item 4,500, 4, which is insurance and bonding, there's, n there's nothing, it's, there's no amount for that. I think I have included that all under building and grounds but I will double check yeah it was that one and there was a, I think there was another one that didn't have any as well yeah which was the community building didn't have any as well maybe that's park facilities that, that or is, something no that's what I did I moved it all back to building and grounds okay thank you mm-hmm Melanie Yes. <laughs> Who's talking to me? Oh, Lord. <laughs> I know. I know. You have to figure out what direction somebody's talking at you. I was looking through the revenue side of things, and on the sheet with the revenues, it's marked that we have, um, let's say, on the last page. So we have the transfer from system development cap. And for the 2021 budget, we have 380,000 listed. So we received 380,000 from system development fees. Is that correct? Right, right. And then when I looked in the budget in water and sewer, the inner, inner fund transfers, is that would, that's reflective of that, that, that same collection, water transfer, you know, and that same 525, I think, is what we've actually realized. So the, the reason I'm asking these things is should we consider, there was some thought about raising the system development fee this year to be the 2023 rate versus waiting. Should we do that or should we let it play out, do you think? I mean, I would think we could use it to help with the purchase of the allocation of the water we need to purchase. If we increased it now, we would have more collection towards that next amount. So last year, I think, you know, the plan was to increase those over a three-year period. So yes, we would be due for an increase. Isn't the top amount? I think right. we top out at 2023. So really, I guess I'm just trying to feel out people's opinion on: Do we go ahead and bump it up to the the, the, the maximum that we're allowed under the statute, which is based on the fee study? Make sure everybody understands where the numbers come from. Do we go ahead and advance it, anticipating we have to buy the water and things like that or do we just let it go through that pro three stages we just bump it up another five it was like a five percent this year and then another five percent in 2023 i think because of what gordon was able to negotiate with the county as far as a two-step purchase of additional water capacity we've got fun we're okay with our funding to purchase that at, for the next three years correct Right, but it's mainly the sewer, um, probably, that, that we need to increase the rate for, for development allocation. I don't have the sheet with it that has the stages, but right. the, it increases, I don't know, we're collecting maybe 35 or something per gallon or something estimated usage of the sewer and, and we could actually collect $43 per gallon in development fees if we go up to the, the maximum this year. Um, 
and on whatever sewer projects and stuff we have that are going to be needed to accommodate things because that's what it goes into it goes back into the system that's what it's for I mean I guess I'd just like to see a demonstrated need for changing the rate of increase that we've already approved before we change it again I mean which I anybody's put forward we handed I handed out that sheet last week so I don't have it with me today um, but maybe we should have a, a brief rate committee meeting and discuss discuss those rates that's that's fine with me I mean we could do it <laughs> today Monday whatever yeah if you all were available um, I also want to mention that you know there's a requirement that ever so often we we have to engage a engineer to justify our rate another study you know McGill did that back in 2018 17 we adopted the study in 2018 yeah so we're going to be on that five-year cusp right could could we wait until we get uh, an engineer on staff the, uh, yeah. There may be an independence problem ah, there, okay. you know. So mm -hmm. we, we'll have to go back and look at the statute and the requirements and see if that's allowable. I do want to make everyone aware that, well, of course, I'm sure you all are aware by now that Brunswick County will be going up on our water rates January one. Uh, we have. Um, I have commissioned Teresa Jones and Melanie to do an analysis of how that would impact residents, restaurants, commercial businesses, and that'll be a handout that will be forthcoming. Uh, they have to, it today. They, they already have it today? Okay. <laughs> so it, that, that is what we anticipate the impact being for our residents. It, it looks like that's about $7.50 a month increase in the base water rate for a residential user, just so everybody knows. Right. It's an increase of $2.36 per thousand gallon, and, and we're just passing it through. We're not, you know, doing a markup percent at all, but that's the projected amount that the city, that the county is going to go up. There's a uh, column in the in the pilot by Commissioner Thompson, if you, if you saw that, concerning this very issue. And um, I talked to Mayor Eckert about this a few weeks ago, and they, they did a similar um, study with their uh, residential and commercial and what effect it would have uh, on Shalot. So this, this is a big issue, and, is, and for what we do, it's a pass-through. We don't, you know, make any money, you know, off of this, but it, the price of it is going to go up, and is to pay for the um, reverse osmosis filtering that has been purchased to, as you all know, for uh, getting Gen X and other, you know, PFAS out of uh, out of our water. So that's where it's coming from. So it's it's, it's money well spent, and it's divided um, uh, throughout the, the county. The, the only other um, thing I think I had in my questions was under community building, that employee was being split between the community building and tourism, I believe. And just to make that note under the summary. As you look over this in the next, you know, few days, any any corrections or you know 
additional explanations that you think need to be needed or noted in here will be welcomed. Um, the, the more eyes that are on a set of documents, the better at this point. So I welcome your input because the, these were drafted by the department heads and um, I've only touched them very little, so I'm sure they, they need some polishing. Looks pretty shiny so far to me. Uh, what a, what a well, thank you. really good job. Thank you, I mean, thank so. you on behalf of the staff. They, yeah. they've all, we've all worked very hard on this. They've, yes. they've done a tremendous job this year. Yes, we commend uh, everyone who worked on this. Um, Melanie and, and appreciate city staff and I, I appreciate in particular Alderman Allen. He has seen many, many budgets and I appreciate your helping us through this as well because uh, you have an insight that um, that those of us who've not been in city government as long as city manager, you seem to have your, uh, we'll use a medical metaphor, you have your finger on the pulse of the budget as well and, and I appreciate that. So. Um, is there any uh, uh, further discussion, questions on the budget at this time? One, just okay. Mayor, in fact, Absolutely. I if I can ask you, since I think you've been involved, um, the capital outlay for the weather tower, yes. I see we're going to carry over 19000 Can you give an update, I think, just for the general public's knowledge? Yeah, we're, we're, still, we're still in the fundraising process, and um, I've been in contact with the uh, engineer, and uh, we, just, we just need a certain amount. And... Um, so we can get started, and it's, it's sort of like um, the city dock and everything else. You have to gain a certain momentum, and then it gets there, and then we will, we're going to bring the weather tower back. So that's where we are right now. Weather tower. No, no, weather tower. The water tower is going to be, it's safe, it's okay, it's got water in it. Alderman Allen is going to make sure of that, and um, so is Chief Coring. So, don't don't mention the weather tower is fine, ladies and gentlemen. It's the, it, the is the water tower is fine. It's the weather tower, Southport weather tower that we'll be bringing back. Money funding. Uh, we probably need about fifty thousand. We have. No, these are we had we had the insurance from it, and then we've had private donations, and uh, and then we need um, the, the around between forty and fifty thousand to get the project fully done. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Just donations, private donations, and then I've have a, have a lot of um, made a lot of asks in terms of that, and we're getting some more money back in. I've already had people to contact to say let us know what you need and that type thing so we're there you know it's it's something that we're going to get done and like I say it's sort of an elective procedure we want to get the I mean base base street versus you know the weather tower you know we want to get base street done and, you know our dock and things like that but it, it will come back but that's where we are right now Any, any further questions for our, on our budget? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Are we, are we meeting guy? next Friday or not? It's, it's up to the board. I, I think that uh, you can probably get your questions answered um, with Melanie or city manager, that type thing. Personally, I don't see the yeah. need, but I just yeah. wanted to con clarify it before we adjourn. Sure, sure. If you'd like, we can take a vote. Uh, anyone, uh, all in favor of who we think we need to meet next week, just raise your hand. Any well, is it something we could just adopt? Yeah. It, any changes, you know, with some of my questions, you may be making adjustments or... And we still have, you know, the public hearing mm -hmm. to go. Uh, we can make, you know, any minor adjustments or whatever, and we'll be publishing this, you know, for the public, public hearing for 
uh, the June meeting and hopefully adoption at the same night. This so isn't I, final. This isn't the last time we're going right, to see it or discuss right. it. So. Are, have you got enough for what you need to send to the LGC? I, th I think so. I, I'm going to put together the actual budget ordinance to also send to the LGC with this. Yeah. Gordon had previously indicated his desire to not intertwine the budget discussions with our monthly meeting in May. So we will not need to meet next Friday. Okay. Um, if you have questions, ask Melanie, ask uh, Mr. Hargrove, or ask John Allen. Either way. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Lombardi, uh, second by Mr. Allen. All in favor? Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.